What's going on, guys and gals? This is Cooking with Tracy, and you know, St. Patrick's Day is tomorrow, and I decided to do some baked corned beef and cabbage. You know, I don't know why I don't make corned beef and cabbage more, because it's a really a easy way to, to fix the meat. It's always good, and we always love it. We always eat all of it. You know, some of the things we cook, sometimes we make so much of it, we don't eat it all, but corned beef and cabbage, we normally finish it, so... Uh, just follow me along. I've done this before, and I'll try to keep this short. Alrighty, we're going to start off with, of course, our corned beef. Guys, I bought, this is a four-pound corned beef. I bought this thing for ten bucks today. Of course, um, it was, that's fairly inexpensive for corned beef. We got uh, our head of cabbage. We got some red potatoes. Got some celery. Got some carrots. We're going to cheat with the carrots. I'm not going to cut them up, the whole carrots. So we just, those are already cut up. We got some garlic. Got some uh, gray poupon mustard over there. Got a little bit of thyme. Got some uh, Creole seasonings here. Um, gotta have you a little roasting pan like that. If that's not an investment you guys have made, you don't have to have that kind, but it really does come in handy. Have all that stuff and let's put it together. All right, if, you're, if you've ever bought a uh, corned beef brisket, you notice that it comes with a little seasoning pack. Some people say to use it, some people say don't. I've always used it and no, it's always come out good. And you also notice it comes with a whole bunch of fluid that it's kind of circulated in. Now, I have thrown this away, but I've been told that you can use this fluid as, a, as kind of like a seasoning mix as well too. So don't throw that stuff away. Use that as part of your liquid um, whenever you get ready to put it in the oven. Okay, now what I've done is I've um, poured off some of that fluid um, that it was in and I've taken the the brisket the corned beef and I've, I kind of rinsed it off a little bit and I wiped it down till it's kind of dry and then we're gonna sear that on both sides in a frying pan I've got some um, coconut oil heating up in the frying pan on medium and we're gonna sear it then we're gonna put it in our roaster alrighty we've got our frying pan heated up with some coconut oil there and we're going to put our brisket in there for about maybe two minutes per side and we're just going to brown it a little bit on both sides okay after it's been there for about two minutes we want to flip this here or attempt to flip it see I'm trying to be all good for the camera. Sometimes the camera don't work right. There we go. We're just going to brown it again. Two minutes on the other side as well too. No more. No less. Alrighty, now we're going to transfer it over into our roasting pan. This time we're going to do it maybe a simple way. There you go. Put it in there like that. And something else that you can do too guys because you're going to need this these juices so we're going to pour all of this over our brisket here all righty now it's time to dress our brisket up we're going to dress it up with a little bit of mustard here just going to spread that mustard all over it i'm not going to show I'm gonna use this whole jar, guys, so don't think I'm double dipping here when I put it back in the, in the um, jar of mustard. I'll do it all over the whole brisket. All righty, isn't that lovely? We're gonna put our little seasoning packets. Again, some people don't use the seasoning packets, but I've had it with the seasoning packets and without it, and it's got mustard in it already, and it just makes it taste better. But you can, you can dress up this meat the way you want to dress it up, you know? I'd also put a little bit of the Tony Satchery's on it. Don't go too crazy with it. And we're going to use just a small amount of thyme if I can get it open. Get our thyme in there, and you can be you can be liberal with this thyme. 
I like thyme, it's a good spice. It smells so fresh. There go. Now in the meantime, make sure that your oven is preheated to 325 degrees and you're gonna to wanna to cook this for about four hours or so. Um, it's, it's usually, um, you wanna cook it um, like a hundred. If it's a four pound um, brisket, you wanna cook it for four hours. So it works out that way. We're also gonna take our juices that we got from our package, add a little bit of, add a little bit of beef broth to it. We're gonna use that to coat the bottom of the pan here. Try not to pour it directly on the brisket. And that's just gonna add some extra flavoring here. And there you go, we're gonna put that in the oven. We're gonna cook it for about two hours and then we'll add our vegetables. All right, um, I don't know if I mentioned that we're gonna be using an onion too. Uh, when I first introduced this video, you got to use onions in it. So I've got the onions chopped up. I've got the celery. That's three celery hearts that are chopped up. I've got about a cup and a half of carrots. About That's about 10 uh, cloves of garlic that I have just kind of roughly chopped. And then we're going to leave those skins on the potatoes, five medium-sized potatoes. Now, we don't go by, you know, uh, proportions in this uh I hardly ever use proportions in, in my videos, but, and everything always comes out good. You just don't want to over salt something and things like that. So I always tell you to be careful with salt because you can always, you can always add more to it, but you can't always take it out. And with the cabbage, I'm not cutting that up. We're going to cut the potatoes up as well too, but I'm not cutting the cabbage up right now because if we leave it out for two hours, it's going to brown and the potatoes will brown as well too. So we don't want to cut that up right now. Alrighty, so we it's been about two hours. We've washed our cabbage, and what I've done is I've, I've taken a knife and gone around the core of this cabbage here. We're gonna cut that out right there. And we're going to cut our cabbage, which I started to cut it. Cut a cabbage like this. About an inch on each side here. And this will draw up here. We won't go all the way through it here. It'll draw up once you put it in with your beef. Also, we have cut our potatoes into about a half an inch to one inch slices here. And we're just gonna mix all this together and we're gonna add it into the pot with the uh, corned beef. All right, let's get our first look at our corned beef here. Ooh, that looks good, that looks good there. And we're going to just slide that over to the center here, to the center. And then we're just going to start adding in our vegetables here. And again, you want to get them nice and mixed in there, all the way around it. And then we'll let this cook the rest of the way. Try not to get it on your, your beef if you can help it. We don't, want to lock, we don't want to knock off the goodness of the beef. Then we'll put our cabbage in there. I say I ended up not even using all of the cabbage there, but we're gonna, that looks like a lot guys, but that will shrink down here. We're gonna sprinkle some seasonings on it on the outside here. And it'll produce its own, um, its own juices here. Its own moisture. We're going to put it back in the oven for another two hours. Alrighty, it's been a little bit over four hours. We just took it out of the oven here. There we go, y'all. That is our corned beef and cabbage right there. Everything's all nicely done. We're going to... Cabbage is cooked thoroughly. Guarantee you potatoes. Let's look at the potatoes here. Potatoes are cooked thoroughly. Everything should be cooked up thoroughly. Guarantee you, my mouth is watering, but it's too darn late. It's like almost 11 o'clock at night here. But I know it's, I know it's gonna taste good. Really don't wanna cut it right now because um, you gotta let it rest, let the juices come to the center. But really, 
um, when you cook it this long, you shouldn't have to do um, let the resting thing, but we're going to let it do it. And, uh, again, it looks good. Everything is done. Easy recipe. You got to try it. Okay, I, I had to make a little cut inside of it so you could see how tender that was. That is super tender, guys. That's going to be some good eating. Peace. Oh, and don't be shocked that it's pink on the inside. That's what corned beef is supposed to look like. So it's not that it's raw. Again, think about it. It's been cooking for four hours. It is, it's not raw. That's just the color of the meat. 